Hey, 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 what's going on out there? It's Jermaine Wright, your LPC, and welcome back to Building Blocks for Mental Health, where I empower you to continue to focus on building and to becoming the best versions of yourself. So today we are going to be talking about a hot button issue that is certainly near and dear to my heart. And this, and this is this has been in the media and there's a lot of uh, crazy stuff going on right now over in Haiti. So we're going to talk about the story of immigrants seeking support from from Haiti. We're going to talk a little bit about their experiences and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some things that we need to be mindful of when we think about interactions and, and, and some of the things that we can do to be sensitive to the needs of, of our of our of our brother and sister, you know, being the, the body's issues. So today we're going to be diving into the topic that's in, and it's both complex and crucial to the mental health challenges faced by immigrants seeking support from Haiti and um, even immigrants, you know, who are currently living here in the United States. And we're going to be focused in particular um, on the events involving Jimmy Shears here, you know, Jimmy Shears here. And let's set the stage. You know, I hope I'm saying his name right. But Jimmy Shazier, also known as Barbecue, and um, listen, it's not the type of barbecue that I think you want to be associated with. So, uh, you know, Mr. Barbecue has emerged as a controversial figure in Haiti, particularly in the context of recent violence and instability, and amidst political turmoil and social unrest many Haitian immigrants living abroad, including those in the United States, are grappling with the emotional fallout of these events. So, for immigrants from Haiti, the journey to seeking support is often fraught with obstacles. Uh, many face systemic barriers, including language barriers, um, cultural stigma around mental health, and limited access to resources, y'all. I mean, additionally, the ongoing socio-political crisis in Haiti has led to heightened stress, trauma, and uncertainty for those with ties to the country. So what does that mean for individuals currently living in the U.S. who are connected to Haiti, either through heritage or personal relationships? Well, that impact can be profound affecting mental health in a myriad of ways. Immigrants may experience heightened levels of anxiety, depression, and PTSD as they grapple with the trauma of political violence, displacement, and loss. Um, it's, it's really sad. And furthermore, the uncertainty and instability in Haiti, it can exacerbate feelings of helplessness, hopelessness, and isolation among immigrants living abroad. I mean, many may feel torn between their desire to support their loved ones back home and their own safety and well-being in their adopted country. So, it's, 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 it's in times like these that it's essential to recognize the importance of seeking support and practicing self-care. So, what I wanted to do is I wanted to offer a few strategies that individuals can employ to cope with the impact. So here are a couple of things that I came up with. Like one of the things I think that we can do to help individuals um, cope with the impact of what's the ongoing crisis in Haiti is seek culturally competent mental health services. You know, it's essential for immigrants to find mental health professionals who understand their unique cultural background and experiences so what you can do is you can look for therapists or support groups that specialize in working with immigrant communities and um you know these individuals will be more likely to understand the nuances of haitian culture another thing that you can do is i recommend building a support network so connect with others who share similar experiences and by doing that they can provide empathy understanding and validation so this may include friends family members or community organizations that provide a sense of belonging and solidarity um, you also want to engage in self-care practices so take the time 
to prioritize self-care activities that promote mental and emotional well-being. So some examples of this may include exercise, meditation, journaling, spending time in nature, or engaging in hobbies and activities that bring you joy and relax and relaxation. You know, even if you're someone that's not in the situation, um, that's that's currently you're not directly physically in proximity in Haiti, that doesn't mean that you know that you that you have to practice survivors of remorse and not engage in self-care practices and take care of yourself. Uh, I think another thing that I, that I often hear is problematic is staying informed but setting boundaries. So yes, while I, I you know, I, hey, listen, I get it. You know, if I had family, you know, that was in another country, another state, another city, another zip code, I would want, and, uh, and there was something, you know, crisis level going on, I would want to stay informed. So, so certainly stay informed about current events going on in Haiti. But I think, you know, you can be mindful of how much news consumption contributes to stress and anxiety. So set boundaries around media consumption and prioritize activities that foster a sense of peace and calmness. Uh, another thing that we can be mindful of is, you know, examining ways to cultivate, so cultivate resilience. So resilience, recognize and celebrate your resilience in the face of adversity. So, you know, maybe some one of the things that we can do that might be helpful is draw strength from your experiences of overcoming challenges. And um, sometimes the best that we can do is focus on building a positive outlook for the future. Uh, you know, lastly, one of the, the, the things we can also do is, hey, advocate for change. So if you're able to get involved in advocacy efforts aimed at addressing the root causes of the crisis in Haiti and supporting um, immigrant communities in the U.S. So this may involve participating in community organizing events, volunteering with local organizations, or advocating for policy changes. I mean, sometimes the best that we can do is the best that we can do. So, in conclusion, the mental health challenges faced by immigrants seeking support from Haiti, they're very complex and very multifaceted. But, by recognizing the unique experiences and needs of this population, and by implementing strategies for coping and resilience building, Individuals can navigate these challenges with strength, courage, and compassion. So remember, you're not alone, and support is available for those who need it. Um, and support is available for those who seek it, because we are stronger together, you know, when we acknowledge each other's circumstances, y'all. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, because it's been on my heart, it's been on my mind. Just seeing the, you know, the, the brutality and the, and the horror, hearing about the horrors that are going on in Haiti, and you know, I'm praying every day, and um, my part, my my ability, and wanting to foster awareness and wanting to help out, I was like, all right, well, I can do a J talk, and I can talk a little bit about some of the issues that are going on over there in that country, and um, I can provide some insight on what are some things we can do as a community to be mindful of what our brothers and sisters are experiencing, right? And then also offer our brothers and sisters some um, some perspective and some ideas for what they may be, um, you know, what they may be able to be mindful of in terms of what they can do to cope and, you know, and take care of themselves. So that's my J Talk for the day, y'all. Um, I hope you found this helpful. Um, and I just want you to continue to keep working on yourself as I continue to empower you to build into becoming the best versions of yourselves. So hey, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and share this with someone who may benefit from it. And I'll see you again, see you soon on the next episode of Building Blocks for Mental Health. Take care.